good morning and happy Mother's Day to all mothers. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and let us be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Won't you join me this morning as we pray together? Gracious and glorious God, we thank you so very much for allowing us to see this blessed day. We thank you, O oh God, for the ability to set aside time to come and to worship you at your invitation. Now, God, we pray that you would bless us. We pray, O oh God, that you would keep us, that God, you would help us as we worship you. Be with us now, O oh God, that everything that is said and everything is done is for your glory. God, this is our prayer. We offer it with thanksgiving in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Will you join us for our opening selection? Our opening selection this morning is Faith of Our Mothers, led, for, led by um, Mr. Victor Demi. You can also find it on your African American hem, um, Heritage Hymnal, page 410. Mothers, adopted mothers, stand-in mothers, all those who are mothering. 
we thank God for each and every one of you. And so we celebrate you today and we honor you today. We thank God for all of you. Welcome to worship. Welcome to worship. Welcome to the worship of our God. But also we welcome you to Trinity Presbyterian Church and we thank God for each and every one of you for visiting with us, for worshiping with us. I invite you, do we have any first time visitors this morning that would like to be acknowledged? Amen. Amen. If not, we um, thank God for each of you. And so you could have chosen to worship anywhere, but you were led of the Lord to be here. And we thank God for you this morning. We thank God for your presence here. So we um, invite you today, um, if you are worshiping with us via Facebook, to like and or to love our post, to write a comment in the comment section to let us know that you're here, to share our broadcast that others may worship with us and experience our ministry. Our announcements for today are as follows. Trinity Travelers are um, hosting an annual summer trip this year to Charleston, South Carolina, and to um, Savannah, Georgia, August 14th through the 19th. You are invited to attend. You're invited to see any one of the trip committee members. You can just slip your hand in the air. I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. And so you are invited to see any member of the committee if you need more information. Um, but we invite you to join with us to share in our fellowship and in our time together. Oops. And there goes the liturgy. Um, we also want to let you know I invite you to join with me on Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. as we worship with St. Paul Baptist Church for their annual revival. I will be the revivalist for Wednesday. That is this Wednesday, so we will not have Bible study because I can't do two things at once. Um, but I invite you just to come on down the street and go with us to St. Paul. Now, if you're going to be worshiping with us, someone asked if it was going to be virtual as well. I think you have to go to their website, and I don't have that, but I guess if you just Google St. Paul Baptist Church, um, it'll pop up the website, and it'll tell you how to connect streaming. But I invite you to be with us as we worship together um, for the revival. And, and if you cannot be there, I invite you to pray with me and for me um, that revival will come, that God will revive our spirits again. Amen? Amen. We are very <clears throat> excited Today is the day. Today is the day and our church school is happening right now. And so we just thank God for our church school. We thank God for um, Corey Bell Jr. who is teaching. We thank God for the youth that are downstairs now. And so we celebrate that. We invite you to spread the word as well because we will have it every second and fourth Sunday. So the next Sunday will be the fourth Sunday, which will be May the 28th, a.k.a. also Pentecost. And so we invite you to be with us on that Sunday as well. But invite all the children and the students to come if you are able to volunteer. We invite you to do so. Amen. Amen. Um, you're willing to train. You're like, well, I don't know anything, but I'm, I'm willing. We accept willing workers. Um, we accept gifted workers. We accept those who are just willing to show up. And so we thank God for you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, I was going to reserve it when it comes up, but okay. <laughs> um, on, we, our weekly prayers are held on Tuesdays and Thursdays via our conference call line. On Tuesday, it is at 7 o'clock p.m. And on Thursdays, it's at 2 o'clock p.m. That conference call line number is 202-926-1179. And the access code is 963-308-POUND. The, um, the Student Aid Committee will meet tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m. via Zoom. Student Aid will meet tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m. via Zoom. Those are our announcements. I don't think I've missed anything. No. Okay. Then if that is the case, that's that being the case, because you're not if it is, but since it is the case, I invite you to stand and turn to your neighbor and greet them with a holy fist bump or elbow bump or something to, um, as we share the peace of Christ with one another. For those of you who are worshiping with us on the call-in line, you are invited to unmute yourselves by pressing star six and sharing the peace of Christ. For those of you who are worshiping with us on Facebook, you are also invited.
invited to share the peace of Christ by typing it in our chat. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. The peace of Christ be with you. Happy Mother's Day to all whom it applies. Amen. And also with you. Amen. It's now time to hear our praise reports and our prayer requests. If you are in the sanctuary, you should have had access to an index card to write your praise reports and your prayer requests on as you were entering. If you are on Facebook, you may write it in our chat. If you are on the calling line, you may unmute yourselves now by pressing star six to share your praise reports and your prayer requests. Praise reports. Praise reports on top of the line. Yes. Um, thank you, Father, for, for today and for your mercy. We praise you for uh, answered prayers. We thank you for traveling mercies and for comfort for grieving families. We ask for the peace of Christ and your healing touch for both my sister-in-law, Kathleen and Nani. For Bernie Walker, on Helen, John Wimber, and the rest of Trinity, sick and shut in and need a prayer. We ask for special blessings for the Moore family and for Rosa for wisdom and guidance and your grace to handle unforeseen problems as they present themselves. Lord, have mercy and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, hear Lord, our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. Amen. Are there prayer requests in the congregation this morning? Was this one that's on the call tonight? We have a couple of callers. We have a prayer request for Joy. Okay. Amen. Then I have only received one um, praise report or prayer request. It is, um, please continue to pray for the Browning and Hartsfield families. Riley is doing better, praise God, amen, but not fully recovered, so we continue to pray. And happy um, Mother's Day to all. Lord, hear, hear our prayers. prayers. Yes. I have a praise report. Yesterday I attended a first communion. And I was very impressed. There were 52 little angels who said did their first communion yesterday. Amen. All right. Praise God. Amen. Lord, hear yeah, our prayers. Thank you. Are there other, any other prayer requests in the congregation before I go to our online um, prayer requests and praise reports? Okay, then we are also lifting up prayers for prayers for all families and friends, especially our neighbors. We're thanking God and praising God for another week. We're praying for mom, Miss um, Elizabeth Urquhart, who is home and doing well. We're wishing others happy Mother's Day. And those are all the prayer requests and praise reports that I have from online. No, there are more. There are not more that are popping up. Oh. <laughs> but if you see, oh one, yeah, more. there's one. Okay, there's one more coming in. Um, we're asking for prayers of healing for Joanne Ware, Elizabeth Urquhart, Loretta Tavera, and Nancy Torres. Mm -hmm. That's the last one that is showing now. But if there are others that um, we need to know about, by all means, please share. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, that's 
scroll both ways. Oh, that's all right. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all righty then. All right, here it is. Mm -hmm. Prayers for all um, mothers uh, who are, uh, you can't see the, the font over the, uh, the okay, I'm trying to see this. Okay, prayers for all mothers, <coughs> grandmothers, expectant mothers, stepmothers, um, those who are, mothers who are incarcerated, um, alienated mothers, and for all females who have stepped in the gap as mentors, um, prayers for, uh, of comfort for all those who are missing their mothers, for the lonely and brokenhearted, um, for people who are um, unemployed, for the homeless, um, prayers for uh, appropriate housing for those who need it, Prayers for healing, for uh, physical, mental, and emotional challenges. Prayer for protection for the vulnerable, for the police, the firefighters, uh, the military um, families. Um, prayer for uh, and sustenance for the homeless, sustenance for the uh, underemployed and unemployed, and good housing and protection. And there are a few more out there, but okay. thank you. Lord, Lord, hear Lord, our prayers. We're asking for prayers for um, the family of Helen Singh, who recently transitioned. We're also asking for prayers for Howard Gardner. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. As others scroll in, I will make sure that I include them. But we're also asking for prayers for those who are on our prayer list. We're asking for prayers for Ms. Louise Brewington, Doreen Butler, Hazel Clark, Irita Gallup, Hazel Hassan Bay, Hyacinth Loffman, Helen Mack, Laverne Parrish, Bernice Pachelle, Peggy Place, Joan Rembert, Bernie Walker, and Lois Williams. Lord, hear our prayers. prayers. Let us pray together. <clears throat> Wonderful and glorious God, we thank you this morning for all that you have done and all of, and all of who you are. Thank you, O oh God, for waking us this morning and for bringing us into this space to worship you and to praise you for who you are and for everything that we have, O oh God. Lord, we thank you as we celebrate mothers today that you would bless those, O oh God, who find this holiday difficult for um, one reason or another. We pray, O oh God, that you would strengthen them. We pray, O oh God, for moms who are struggling, for moms who are finding it a hard time to be moms. We pray, O oh God, for those who want to be moms but cannot be for whatever reason. And so, God, we simply pray that on this day, you would bless every one of us where we are. God, but we do take time to set aside time to honor our mothers, oh God, as you have commanded us to do. So, Lord, we thank you. We pray, oh God, that you would bless those who are sick, that you would heal them in the name of Jesus. And thanking you, oh God, for hearing the uh, praise report that baby Riley is doing a bit better. We thank you, oh God, for those who have recuperated, those who are recuperating. We thank you for progress that is made and for your care and your love that keeps us so that we can continue to progress, oh God. Lord, I thank you for your provisions over us and to us and for us. God, I thank you for your blessings once again. And now, God, I pray that, Lord, for those that are standing in the need, that you would give us the things that we need, oh God. That you would give housing to those who need housing, more appropriate or housing at all. We pray, oh God, that you would give sustenance to those who are in need of sustenance, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you would give opportunities and jobs to those who are unemployed or underemployed, oh God. That, God, their, 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 um, resource would meet the need, oh God. Lord, I pray that you would give wisdom and guidance and direction to those who are seeking your face, to those who don't even know which way to turn. And Lord, for those of us who are searching, who are searching for answers, oh God, who are searching for ways to go, who are searching for what comes next, Lord, we pray that you have your way and how you guide. Thank you, oh God, for the things that we know are not your will, and God, help us to wait on that which is. 
Lord, we just bless you now and we honor you. For growth, we say thank you. For spiritual development, we say thank you. For volunteers, we say thank you, oh God. God, we just bless your holy name. And we pray, God, that you would have your way. We thank you, oh God, for this day of celebration and this day of being together. And now, God, we pray that you would bless us in this moment, oh God. Bless us in this moment of worship, oh God. That no matter what is going on around us, that God, we may worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray, oh God, that you would revive our spirits. Renew us, oh God. Help us to walk with you and talk with you, oh God. Lord, we just bless you now. Let this not be just another day, but God, let it be impactful and let it be unique. Let it be special in how we glorify your name. God, as we do, we pray, oh God, now that you would manifest your presence in our midst, oh God, that we may know and say with that assurance that God, you are here. We thank you, oh God, for this, and we thank you, oh God, for all of these things. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen. Beloved of God, it is almost time to give. So we pray that you get your gifts prepared as we are going to be giving. But before we do that, I would like to invite um, Miss Mary Reed Learmont to come to the front because we are going to be sharing and receiving our receiving her into membership. Amen. All right. <laughs> yes. So, Miss Mary um, came to us and said that she wanted to be a member. She's coming and she's been saved. She's a Christian and, and she joined Trinity. She's been in Presbyterian. As a matter of fact, she has been, she's a um, past elder. Um, but she came to us and said she was ready to join. She loved what we were doing here. This seemed to be the place for her and it was a fit. And so, she diligently waited for us to start the new members classes. And then she diligently went through the new members classes. And then she diligently waited for us to receive her into membership. And it was one thing after the other. Um, but certainly, we thank God for her. And so today, we receive you into membership at Trinity. Um, we invite you and we praise God for you. You, at this point, have the full rights and privileges of all members. You can vote. You can work. You can, you, can, you can work anyway, but you've been working. But you can work anywhere the Lord shows you and sees fit to um, lead you. And um, this Bible represents the one that is at home with my shoes. Amen. <laughs> that all got left this morning. <laughs> but it represents the one that has been purchased just for you based on our conversations together. And so we welcome you and we invite you um, on good days, on bad days, to read the word of God. Let it settle into your heart as God continues to speak to us through God's word, as God continues to speak to us through those who are around us in life circumstances, as God continues to speak to you even in your prayer time. We invite you and encourage you to continue to grow um, as the old saints used to say, and as the scripture says, in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Amen. And so God bless you and welcome to Trinity. You are now officially a member. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. I look forward to working and worshiping with everyone. Mm -hmm. We invite um, our elders to come to receive, so um, she may receive the right hand of fellowship. You can line up on this side, and then we invite after our elders, our deacons to come, and we are going to share in um, the right hand of fellowship. Your membership certificate is on its way. At okay. point. Yes, that's good. God bless you and welcome.
we thank God that all things happen in God's timing and in God's way and in God's moment. And so we want to thank God for you. We want to take this time to also honor um, the late Tracy Groynton, who was scheduled to be in this new members class and um, passed right before it, it began. But we want to honor her. We want to honor her. Um, similarly, because she was ready, and so we thank God for that, and we don't want this moment to pass. So in doing that, we also want to certainly keep um, Mrs. Royce, especially in our prayers today. Amen. 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 Now, it is giving time. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so we thank each and every one of you. We praise God for all that God has done. We invite you today to prepare your hands and your hearts to give. Um, if you're giving today, you may give in several ways. You may give, A, by writing a check to Trinity Presbyterian Church, putting it in the mail, or mailing it to 5 High Street, um, Montclair, New Jersey. Or you may, um, if you're here physically, you may give by leaving your gift in the vestibule, the same place you receive your index cards to share your prayer request. It's the same place um, that we give our gifts. Our monetary gifts, you may give by um, giving through Biblify.com, looking for Trinity Presbyterian Church in Montclair. That's the one you need to look for. Trust me, because if you don't, you'll end up somewhere else. They will receive your gift. They're not going to send it to us. So just be careful. If you want us to have it, look for the one in Montclair, the Trinity Presbyterian Church there. Um, finally, you may also give through your um, banking institution's bill pay feature. You may share your gift there. Amen? Amen. Mercy. Let's pray and then we shall receive our gifts. God, we thank you for both the gifts and the giver. We pray, oh God, that you would use them for your glory. We pray, oh God, that you would just help the hands that receive it, that we would be good stewards over it. And bless that which remains, that we may use it appropriately for you. We thank you, oh God, for this and we thank you for all of these things. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I forgot to tell you. <sighs> Women's Day is next Sunday. Women's Day is next Sunday. And we are very excited. We're very excited um, because next Sunday our guest preacher will be none other than my sister, my friend, Reverend um, Crystal White. Reverend Crystal White will be our guest preacher for next Sunday, 10 a.m. sharp. It is Women's Day. We invite you to come to celebrate with us as we share together. Okay? Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Women's Day. Amen. Um, do you guys have a report this morning? We can. Would you lift it? I appreciate it. At least for this one, the first one. So this happens when you when you are the teacher of a sibling. <laughs> okay. Hi. Morning. Um, yeah. Good morning again. Good morning. Um, today in Sunday school, we talked about, do you remember, does anyone remember, Grace, do you remember what we talked about? Let me talk about Okay, Grace, do you remember what Adam and Eve did? <laughs> you don't remember? We talked about how God created them to do what?
for um, to take care of the rest of the world and all of God's creations. He made little rock pets to be like Adam and Eve, because if God created them, we can at least create little pets for ourselves. And we're going to take care of them like God takes care of us, and like Adam and Eve take care of everything else, or we took care of everything else that we created. Okay.
because God has been so good to me. He purchased my redemption with his own precious blood, and from sin I have been set free. I
Lord, I pray that you would have your way as I stand before your people to proclaim your word. Have your way, O oh God, in me, through me. Have your way, O oh God, by going before me, preparing the hearts of your people to receive your word, that they may hear you speaking to them clearly, O oh God. I pray, God, that you would anoint me afresh and ready me to be used by you. Lord, I pray that you would consecrate me now for thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is coming from 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1, beginning at verse 12. 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1. Commencing at verse 12, concluding at verse 28. And while we're turning, let me take this time again to simply wish every mother a happy Mother's Day. For those of you that find Mother's Day difficult for a multitude of reasons, I am praying for you and with you. Um, but we just want to say happy Mother's Day. Amen? Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 12. To me. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 12. 1 Samuel chapter 1, beginning at verse 12. Samuel is in the Old Testament. Um, after the book of Ruth, I had to run down in my head for a minute. Okay? First Samuel, chapter 1, beginning at verse 12, reading this morning from the New Revised Standard Version, and this is the Word of God. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying silently, only her lips moved. But her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But Hannah answered, No, my lord. I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink. But I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman. For I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, let your, faith, let your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went her way and ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was, no, was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, and for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. The man Elkanah and all his household went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and to pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, As soon as the child is weaned, I will bring him that he may appear in the presence of the Lord and remain there forever. I will offer him as a Nazarite for all time. Her husband Elkanah said to her, do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord establish your word. So the woman remained and nursed her son until, he, until she weaned him. When she had weaned him, she took him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine. She brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh, and the child was young. Then they slaughtered a bull and brought the child to Eli. And she said, Oh, my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who was standing here in your presence praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me the petition that I made to him. Therefore, I have lent him to the Lord as long as he lives. He is given to the Lord, and they worshiped the Lord there. This morning, for as long as God allows me to stand before you, I'd like to preach to you from the subject, A Praying Mother. A praying mother. 
book of God, around this time of the year, there are so many songs that we hear about and um, honoring and venerating our mothers. We hear in the secular, um, O oh Sadie, right? We hear um, songs like, um, some of the other stuff that is, is just eluding me right at this moment. Um, but we hear songs like the one sung by Helen Baylor, uh, which is it's, it's the prelude or the introduction to if it had not been from, for the Lord who was on my side. And in this long prelude, she talks about she had a praying grandmother, someone who prayed for her. We sing it in the songs that we sing in church that are more familiar with us sometimes when we say, um, somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. And one of the verses says, my mother prayed for me. She had me on her mind. She took the time and she prayed for me. I remember as I grew up, there was a, a lady that sang on the gospel chorus in the choir. And every Mother's Day, she would just tear the whole church up because she would sing a song that said, um, I wish I could hear my mother pray again. And it would just mess everybody up because as she was singing it, she sang it with such feeling in remembering her mom praying for her. Her mom being a prayer warrior. Beloved of God, I don't know about you, but when we talk about praying mothers, how many of you have made it, as it were, before you came to your senses on the prayers of your parents, on the prayers of your mama and your daddy and your grandma and them? How many of you have had parents or moms who prayed for you? I promise you there were some times when I did not want to be kept, but my mother's prayers kept me. Thank you, Jesus, and hallelujah. There were times when I wanted to go left and my mama's prayers kept me and made me go right. And I thank God for my mama's prayers. Love of God, there are some things that help to strengthen us and one of them is a mother's prayer. We've been talking about a praying mother. So think about this, it's like, well, listen, what constitutes a praying mother? Because everybody's mama doesn't pray. Everybody's mama does not know Jesus. And I understand that. Everybody's mama is not that type of a mother. And you are absolutely right. But if you look at the text, I think we can see some characteristics of a praying mother. And honestly, whether you had one or whether you are one now, I encourage you to be a praying parent, a praying auntie or uncle or nephew or whatever it is. I encourage you to incorporate prayer in your life. So what then constitutes a praying mother? So glad you asked. The first thing I see in the text is this. The first thing that constitutes a praying mother is that she, wait for it, she prays. Amen. That's real simple. Y'all thought it was going to be something deep. No. The first thing that constitutes a praying mother is the fact that she prays. If you look at the text, what you understand and what I see is that Hannah prayed in all the way up in verse 12 before Samuel was even conceived. She prayed for the conception of her son. She prayed after he was born. She prayed even when she presented him before the Lord. She prayed, saying, Lord, I'm praying that you would simply give me the desires of my heart. That, God, you would bless me with a son. Let me see if I can put this in some context. Hannah was a woman who was uh, um, lived in, in ancient Israel. And in ancient Israel, many times a woman's work was only based on how well her womb produced a son. As a matter of fact, it was so much so that um, it was permissible that if you, if your first wife, if your wife could not have children, you were permitted to take a second one. That's what Elkanah, her husband, had done. Hannah, he loved and loved and loved that she could not conceive, and so he took a second wife who was Penina. Penina was his second wife, and he had her simply so that she could have children for him, and she did. But imagine being Panina, and you are here, and it's like, I know the only reason that you married me was so that I could bear children for you. And every year they would go up because, you know, Elk and I had good sense. He didn't keep the two women in the same household. That was good sense, right? And, and so, but every year they would go up as a family, as a whole unit, to the house of God, to pray and to sacrifice. And when they went up, Elk and I, I'm sorry, Panina would look over at Hannah, like, hmm. Mm-hmm. You over there, he loves you, and he dotes on you, and he gives you a double portion every time we 
come up. But I got his babies. You can imagine, because here's this dialogue. There's this dichotomy that's happening. That yes, I am proud to be a mother, but I also, I am only your wife because I am a mother. So no, I don't like her. Because that's the only way I can, I can, I can, I can put out my, you know, I can um, express my frustrations. Because I, you're my husband, but I don't like her because she's still got to be here. And Hannah would look at Penina and be like, oh, God, every time I come up every year, she's teasing me. Let me pause right here. Let me help you, beloved of God, because God understands us. God understands when we're in a place where we desire something so deeply, when our heart desires it, and it just does not seem to come forth, whether it just does not seem to be birthing out of us, whether that's physical children or it's something else. God understands and hears our prayers. If you are in a place like Hannah before your child, whether it is a physical child or a proverbial child, whether it was before he is even born, like Hannah, if you're going to be a praying mother, you simply need to pray about that thing. You need to pray about the conception of it. You need to pray about the safe, um, the safe um, birth of it. You need to pray about it flourishing. You need to pray in all the ways that God, I'm simply asking that you would do this thing for me. Hannah was a praying Mother, She prayed so much so that while she was praying when they went up before the Lord this particular year, Elkanah to me, not Elkanah, Eli, who was the priest, saw her pray because her mouth was moving, but no words were coming out. And Eli looked at her and like, you are a shameful woman. How dare you come up to worship the Lord at the house of God and be drunk before the Lord? And she says, listen, I promise you, as surely as my name is what it is, that I am not drunk and I am not a worthless woman. I am pouring out my heart to God. And Eli, once he'd been corrected and realized how wrong he was, he says, I tell you what, whatever you're praying about, he didn't even ask her what it was, whatever you're praying about, may it be unto you. May God grant it unto you as you're asking it. And so, a simple word from the Lord, as she was praying, it lifted her spirits. It wasn't today. We don't know how many days afterwards she became, um, she conceived Samuel, but she still prayed and her spirits were lifted. She went home in faith. Oh, beloved of God, when we understand that a praying mother prays and she prays even before she sees the manifestation, but not only does a praying mother pray, a praying mother praises God. Notice, if you will, in the text what happens there. If you look in the text, it says, and so he speaks to her and he tells her, um, he tells her not to be a worthless woman. And she says, let, listen, let me promise you, I am not, I am not, I am not a worthless woman. But I have been praying. And it says in verse 19, they rose early in the morning and they worshipped before the Lord. And then they went back to their home. See, beloved of God, I need you to understand something. If you are going to be a praying mother, if you're going to be praying about this thing that you're giving birth to, not only do you pray for it, not only do you pray in advance and even after it arrives with thanksgiving and keeping your promise to the Lord, but you also praise God even before you see it. Notice the text says that she talked to Eli. Then she went and worshipped God. This was before she even got back home to, to um, interact with her husband in any sort of way. Beloved God, when you pray and you receive the word from God, you go ahead and give God a praise in advance. I believe that there are those of us who are sitting here today who are listening to the sound of my voice and you understand that there are some things that you have been praying about. There have been some, there are some things that you have been asking the Lord to do for you to give birth in your life too. There are some things that you are simply waiting on God to do and I as a pastor am listening and hearing God say, listen, I don't know what you've been praying for, but God says, I'm going to do it. And when God gives you this word of affirmation, this word that I have heard you and I am answering you, God is also inviting you to praise God in advance. You don't have to wait until you see it manifest. You don't have to wait until you see the sign of You don't 
praises God in advance of even seeing it. We also see that a praying mother presents her children before the Lord. Notice what happens in the text. When Hannah is speaking to Eli, she says, when, when the Lord promises her, she says, I promise you that if the Lord grants me this, I will give him back to the Lord. That he may minister before the Lord all the days of his life. And so what happens is, after um, Samuel is born, it was that time of year again for them to go up to the house of God to worship. And Elkanah prepares everything, and he's preparing um, Benina and her children. And here's Hannah with her son, Samuel. And Hannah says this, she says, I am going, I'm not going this year, but as soon as the baby is weaned, I'm going up to the house of God, and I'm going to present him to God as I promised. And Elkanah, her husband, says, listen, that's fine, do what you need to do, but make sure you keep your word to God. And sure enough, once the baby is weaned, she brings him to the house of God. She presents him. Now, the love of God, you will see, and you may have heard, this is the scripture that we often read when we're dedicating a baby before the Lord, when we're baptizing a baby. Just as Hannah brought Samuel, we also dedicate our children to the Lord that they may be raised, that they may, be, they may grow up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. It is the reason that we don't just arbitrarily baptize children if you are not a part of the larger congregation and community. Because when we do it, what we're saying is that you have made a commitment like Hannah. You have made a promise like Hannah to raise your child after the ways of God. Yes. Hannah presents her child. She presents Samuel before the Lord. She brings him. And here's the thing. Because this is what we don't do. And this is where we, our minds get bothered. She left him there. Not only does she present him to the Lord and bring an offering with her presentation, saying, God, I thank you because you heard my prayer and you answered me. At that point, she could have been talking to me like, I'll give you the next one, but not this one. I mean, God, this is the one that you gave me, the one that I prayed for. But no, she doesn't do that. She not only prays for Samuel, and not only does she praise God in, the, in advance before Samuel gets here, and not only does she present Samuel before the Lord, but now she keeps her promise about her child. She told God, God, if you give him to me, I'm going to give him back to you. God, if you give him to me, he will belong to you all the days of his life. God, if you give him to me, I am going to present him to you. And when she presents Samuel before Eli at the house of God, when they went up to worship, she also left him there in the employment and in the household of Eli. So that Eli basically raised her child and he grew up literally in the church. His room was right outside of the place of the holiest of holies where the, where the presence of God would come and reside. That's where his room was. That's where he first heard the Lord speak to him. And every year um, um, Hannah would come back up and she would bring her baby a new set of clothes. She would bring him a coat. She would bring him some clothes to take care of him. But she left him in the employ, in the presence of God because she made a promise. Oh, beloved God, how many of us make promises to God and then go, go back on our word? God, if you get me out of this this time, I promise you I'll never get into it again. And before we can say amen, we back up in it again. Lord, if you deliver me, God, if you let me win the lottery, I promise you I'm paying my time. We're going to help the board and then we're going to do some other stuff. And we might hit and go, oh, thank you, Jesus, and forget all the the rest of the stuff that we promised to Jesus. But beloved of God, what we see in this text is that Hannah remembered her promise to God. She remembered that she said, listen, God, if you give him to me, I'm going to give him back to you. She remembered that no matter what she'd been through, and even though she had to deal with Penina, and even though she had to deal with um, her husband having a second wife, even though she had to deal with being married for all of those years, even though she had to deal with all of that, she said, God, I promise you that I'm going to give you this son if you give him to me. And she did what she said. I need you to understand something, my friends, on this Mother's Day. A praying mother keeps her promises to God about her children. A praying mother keeps her promises that when she says, Lord, I'm showing up, and I 
I want to be a mom. And I promise you that if you bless me, God, I am going to raise them to love you. A praying mother remembers her promises by showing up and simply saying, God, I'm going to raise up a train of a child in the way that he should go so that when he or she is old, they will not depart from it. A praying mother understands that, God, I have made some promises to you. And I promise, God, to bring them and to nurture them so that they will know you for who you are, God. with you. 
Love of God, that's all I'm saying to you, that if you're going to be a praying parent, you've got to be able to see what God sees. You've got to be able to hear what God is saying. You've got to be able to do what God is showing you. And you've got to cover your, your children. You've got to protect them. You've got to pray for them. You've got to keep them. And sometimes it will not make sense. Sometimes you will not understand why you need to say no. But sometimes you just need to do it because you heard God say it. You need to pray for your children. That's what it means to be a praying mother. A praying mother prays for her children. Even when they don't want to consent to it, you pray for your children. You pray for them even when they don't know you're praying. You pray for them even when they're out of the house. You pray for them when they're down the hall. You pray for them while they're awake and while they're sleeping, when they're with you and when they're away. Keep on praying. Amen. Amen. Today I invite, I invite you, I invite you, all of you who seek and desire prayer, I'm first inviting mothers that want to be prayed for as you pray for your children to come to the front so that we may pray together with you and for you. And then others, other parents, you may come. And then others who simply want to be prayed for as we care for our children, as we become praying parents, praying mothers, praying guardians, praying aunties and, aunt and grandmothers and, and extended family, praying neighbors, I invite you to come that we may pray together because I want to pray for you as you stand in the gap for the children. Amen. 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 You're invited Amen. to come and to join me here. Listen. When it feels like they have not heard anything, 
Lord, help them to stay the course. Help them to continue to pray for their children. Help them to continue to praise you for their children when they'd rather remove their heads from the rest of their personages. God bless them not to do violence in the name of Jesus. To take out the gift that you've been given them. Lord, I pray facetiously, but rather seriously, God. When our backs are against the wall and we are frustrated, even with the words that we speak, oh God. Let us speak life over our children and in their presence and not speak harm to them. Lord, let us be loving representatives of you in their lives. That even like the prodigal son, if they are away from us, they still know who you are. Yes. And while they are away, God, we still pray for them. Mm -hmm. And we cover them. So God, I pray that you would strengthen every person here that we would continue to continue to just intercede for our children. And ultimately, oh God, like Hannah, we lift them up to you, not praying our will for them and their futures. Woo, Jesus. But we relinquish them into your hands that you may make of them what you want to do, God. That you may do with them, oh God, what you want to do with them and not, oh God, what we want you to do with them. And God, if they are the whatever we want, thank you. But if they are not, God, as long as they are in your will, we say thank you. And we continue to release them to you. Because God, they are not ours. They have just been entrusted to us to steward over them as their parents. And so God, I thank you for each parent, the privilege. I thank you, God, for each person standing in the gap. That you would cover them and strengthen their hands on the blessed, on the best day, but even on the most challenging day as well. We thank you for them. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We now are going to share in our Apostles' Creed, and then we are going to have our benediction. Okay? So, yes, you may return to your seats if you want, or if you want to stay right here, you can. I want to go every you choose. Thank you, O oh God, for who you are and for all that you've done. 
We thank you, O oh God, for praying mothers. We thank you, O oh God, for praying parents, for those who stand in the gap and pray for God all that you have entrusted to us. Whether it is birthing or the birthing of children or the birthing of a vision or the birthing of, of the manifestation of the gifts that you have poured into us, God, we say thank you for what you've done. And we pray, God, that you would help us to continue to pray and continue to bring forth and to be good stewards, good managers over all that you have entrusted to us. Knowing, oh God, that it does not belong to us, but you've simply given it to us for a time to manage it and to care for it. Let us do our very best in caring for it, in caring for our children. I pray now, God, that you would bless us as we prepare to leave this place, but never your presence. Presence That you would remind us, oh God, that eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men what God has in store for those who love you. Thank you, oh God, for the privilege of us watching and witnessing how you are working it out. Thank you for the privilege of stewarding our children through this process. Thank you, oh God, for this privilege. Now unto the one who is able to keep us from falling, who is able to present us faultless before God's throne, to the only wise God, our heavenly parent, be glory, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And the people of God said together, amen. 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 So be it. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Happy Mother's Day. Be safe. Um, I pray that you feel celebrated and, and um, all the things. Amen. God bless you.